Fight! Oh, hello. Do you like video game? Well, here's video game. See, it says here, for use with PlayStation video game. This is video game of Monster Rancher. In Japan, the series is called Monster Farm, and the games range from Pokemon-esque fighting games, to battle card games, to this mint condition PlayStation game I have right here. Monster Rancher Hopabout a.k.a. Monster Farm Jump in Japan. What does it have to do with the rest of the Monster Rancher series? No, nothing. Despite the title having the word bout in it, there's no fighting or nothing like there is in the other Monster Rancher games. You literally just hop about. But it's fun. So, let's hop to it. <laughs> the story in this game is... Well, it doesn't really matter, but some of the monsters from the series find themselves in a strange land chasing a fairy or something. Riveting. The goal of the game is to get your monster to the goal within the time limit and without dying en route by blowing up or falling off the edge. Get to the end of the level without dying and your character goes ballistic. This game came out in 2000, but it's still a PS1 game and the graphics are... Yeah. Don't you just love it when your teeth come out the bottom of your jaw? The graphics are whack to death, but this game is all and only about gameplay, which is fun. And if you're familiar with the old game Bounder, it's basically a 3D version of that. There are four different characters to choose from, each with different characteristics that you would usually find in a racing game like Mario Kart. Speed, acceleration, and hops. <laughs> All of the characters use pogos to get their hops in, except One-Eyed Willy, who hops oh natural. That was good. As far as the characters go, they sure are no Pikachu or Squirtle, but on the upside, this character here is voiced by Tim the Toolman Taylor. <laughs> so that's nice. This is a really goofy game with goofy upbeat music to match. Wait, is that a kazoo I hear? Wow, it's not often you get to hear one of the most complex musical instruments known to man. Speaking of complex, check out this control scheme. The right directional button moves you right, the left directional button moves you left, the up directional button moves you forward, and the down directional button moves you back. That's it. Control-wise, this is one of the most simplistic games on the PlayStation. Despite this game coming out in the year 2000, you can only use the D-pad as opposed to the analog stick, so get ready for some blisters. But on the bright side, it does have vibration compatibility, so at least you can soothe your aching thumb. The controls aren't bad, but they're pretty floaty, and this kind of adds to the challenge. It takes time to slow down and change the direction of your jump, so you'll have to be thinking ahead while making your way forward and avoiding the traps and pitfalls. It'd be too simple to just go from one end of the stage to the other, so there are lots of different kinds of panels with many different effects, speed up and down, gravity up and down, time up and down, life up and down, one directional, reverse, and random directional springs, panels that let you jet across the stage for a limited amount of time, and glass panels that break after touching them once, and unlike the other panels, you can't continue from the last glass panel that you touched. This may look like, and in fact be, a kid's game, but I really don't think I can overemphasize the amount of skill, patience, perseverance, and occasionally luck needed to advance through this game, especially in the later stages where the level design gets downright evil. The game takes a bit of getting used to, and I remember not really digging the game right out of the box, but it gets more fun and challenging the more you play and progress through the levels. This is a two-player game, and whether you're playing two-player mode or switching off, this game is a lot more fun to play with another person. Yeah! The main game is 60 stages, and then there are dozens of bonus stages after that. The highest level I've ever gotten to is 86, and the stage editor makes for nearly limitless replayability, if you're into that kind of thing. There's no time. There isn't a lot of information about this game online. I mean, there isn't even a Wikipedia page for goodness sake, and even Underwater Basket Weaving has its own page. But it did receive a few reviews, and they weren't great. Along with the rest of the Monster Rancher series, it received lukewarm to not-so-great reviews. EGM gave it a decent 7 out of 10, and IGN gave it a 3 out of 10. If you like goofy, obscure games like me, you might like this one, and you can find it online for around 10 bucks, and while technically it's a pretty simplistic and mediocre game overall, it's got it where it counts. It's friggin' fun. Pet it.
But you don't have to take my word for it. Hello? Hey Andrew, it's Eric, how's it going? Hey man, what's up? Hey, you remember that game Monster Rancher Hopabout we used to play? Yeah, I remember that game. It was a total piece of sh There you have it. I'll see you next time on another...